praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We magnify your name for a time like this. We thank you, Father, because you are God. There is none like unto thee. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for all you continue to do in our life. Thank you most especially for our Lord Jesus, who died for us on the cross of Calvary, and by his stripes we are healed. Thank you for your word, by which the whole of creation was made. So today, Lord, we ask that even as we learn at your feet, Lord, that by your Spirit, in communion with your Spirit, you will teach us all things, even the deep secrets of you, O oh Lord, that in all things will be more than conquerors through him that has loved us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, our Lord. Thank you, our Savior. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love, we thank God again that we have this opportunity to be with you again. And it's a prayer that God will continue to be our strength, our love, our guide, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles this morning to 2 Kings chapter 4. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 6. 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 1 to 6. Hallelujah. Scripture reads, says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what art thou in the house? And she said, Thine armed maid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside out which is full so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out and it came to pass when the vessels were full that the woman said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in Jesus' name. Amen. And the oil stayed. Yes, the oil stayed. So this morning we're going to be talking about do you have a problem? Yes, do you have a problem? Why are we talking about do you have a problem? Yeah, because the scripture we read today in 2 Kings chapter 4 talks about a woman who had problems. From the beginning, she had problem. At the point where we ended in verse 6, where it said, and the oil state, she still had a problem. Yes, she had a problem because you see, in life, you have either of one or of two problems. The first problem is a supply problem. The other problem is a capacity problem. And the question is, how? And it's simple. When we opened up in verse 1 of the scripture, this woman was complaining to the prophet Elisha of her problem. Her husband is dead. 
he had people he was owing money. And now she cannot pay. Worst case is, even when the man of God says, so what do you have? All she had was a pot of oil. So she had a supply problem. She had things to do. She had things she needed to overcome. She had challenges she needed to deal with. But there was little capacity. There was little or no supply to deal with them. Now, by the time she akins to the word of the man of God, by the time her faith, because just imagine, get more vessels, get more pots, get everything more that you needed to get. And just pour. And just pour. Simple. But it takes a person of faith, a person that understands that God's word is alive and active, that in God there is unfathomable mercy and grace to deliver, to save, to take us away from the obscurity, the challenges that we deal with today. So the woman poured. By the time she kept pouring and pouring in verse 6, by the time she kept pouring, she didn't even notice that all the verses were filled. So she has a song, yeah, give me more verses and say, no, we are done. We don't have any more verses. So she now had a capacity problem. She had enough but there was no place to throw it at. You see, in scripture, in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, God said something to us. Talking about, he said, bring your tithes to my storehouse. And in and, and, and the second part of that scripture, he said, I will pour upon you a blessing. Ah, pour. He said, that there will be no room enough to receive. That's the gift of God. It make it rich. It added no sorrow. I said the beautiful thing in ending that scripture. I said, and the oil stayed. Hallelujah. See, do you have a problem? What sort of problem do you have? God said, I will pour upon you a blessing that here yeah, will be no room enough to receive. So it doesn't matter where the challenge is coming from. Is it in your marriage? Is it in your finances? Your children? Where is that challenge? At work? Is it a supply challenge? Is it a capacity problem? Where is the problem? So we have a father in the Lord that cares for us. See, he loves us so much. that scripture said, even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He paid the price for us. Even when he did not know us. Even when we were yet sinners. The creditors came to take unto him as sons, as bondmen. But God came true. God came true. From a supply problem. He had a capacity problem. And God is speaking to someone out there today. He's speaking for you, speaking to you and say, Son, I don't know where you are coming from, daughter. I don't know what that problem is. I don't know what you are dealing with. But I, I know that Jesus is adequate. It's all I need. It's all you need. That's why the songwriter says, I know who my belief and I am persuaded he is able to keep me against that day. He's able to keep you, irrespective of how big that problem is, how big that challenge is. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. But you see, all of these promises are for them that know him. They that know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploit. Those that have a relationship with him. So, do you have a relationship with this Jesus? Have you given your life to him? Or you were walking with him and something suddenly happened? This morning you have an opportunity to return back to your first love. Jesus loves you. He wants to walk miracles in your life. He wants to come into your life and give it a meaning. So call the numbers on the screen. We'll be there to pray with you, cancel, as Jesus leads the way. Just know this, God loves you. 
and so do we.